um, in, in this session is uh, Xincheng Zhang from the University of Toronto. So take it away, Xincheng. Okay, thank you. So thank organizers. So thank organizers for organizing this event. So I'm glad to be here to talk about the black rings distribution and the KP equation today. So this is based on the problem suggested by my supervisor, Jeremy Costell. So let's start with the KPZ equation. So this is uh, SPD. Uh, I, I think we're only seeing your first slide. Oh, okay. Yeah, now we can see it more, thanks. Oh, thank you. So let's start with the KPZ equation. So this is the famous SPDE, which introduced by Kadam Parisi John to model the random growth of some height function. So the randomness comes from this Cauchy XT term. So the Cauchy XT is the Gaussian space-time white noise. And uh, the KPZ equation stay in the KPZ universality class as the name suggests. So for models in the KPZ universality class, so there are two features. So one is that you can see non-trivial fluctuation at t to the one third large time scale. And the second is that uh, with, different initial, it, with different initial condition, you will see different large time behavior. So for the KPZ equation, if for a narrow wedge case, so if you center, the, center your, your function and uh, take the t to the one third scale, and you look at x equal to zero. As t goes to infinity, you will see the FGUE distribution. And for the flat initial data, in the large, you'll take the same, same, same scaling and the, in the large time limits, you will see the GOE distribution. So both here, the both GOE and GOE distributions arise in random matrix theory. So they describe the largest the probability distribution of the largest eigenvalues in GOE and the GOE random matrix. And then for the Brownian motion initial data, you will see this F0R distribution. So this F0R is the bike rings distribution F tau R evaluates at tau equal to zero. So here we will give the definition of bike rings distribution later. So, so these are three, uh, three possible initial data. Of course, there are some more. So given uh, these three distribution, like it's, it's interesting to know that whether there exist some general rules which govern the distribution function. So in 1999, Tracy Williams showed that the partial square, the, the second partial in R of the log of the FGUE distribution is equal to minus Q square. So here the function Q is the hasty mccloud solution to the Penlevé 2 equation. And more recently, Quastel and Ramnick proved that, proved the following result. So if you start the KPZ equation with some deterministic initial data, and you look at this large space-time scale of the KPZ equation. So here, this is basically the same, same like t to t to the one third scale. Uh, I don't think your theorem has loaded. Oh, okay, now it is, sorry. Oh, okay. So, uh, so this is basically the same. Uh, so you look at the probability function of this KPZ equation at large time space scale. So this is the same t to the one third scale in the previous slides, but it is taking a different way. So you, you introduce the extra variable epsilon and epsilon have the correct one, two, three scaling and you let epsilon goes to zero. And you see in this way, you'll see the extra variable t in the limit. And then you define the function phi to be the second partial in R of the log of the function big F. So this phi will satisfy the KP equation. So this is the KP equation. So the KP equation first arises in describing long waves in shallow water, but it seems that there is no like similar physical explanation here for the distribution function. So for now, it is still mysterious like why the distribution function will satisfy the KP equation. And in particular, in particular, the GOE and the GOE distribution arise as similarity solutions of KP. So in this talk, I will show that one initial condition is Brownian motion. The second partial in R of the log of partial R inverse of the function F satisfies KP. So the big F is defined as similarly here, but with the Brownian motion initial condition. And uh, this F, big F XTR will be the scale by Green's distribution. So the weird thing is here you have a partial R inverse. So you should interpret this partial R inverse as like you're taking integral from negative infinity to R. And this operator is particularly weird because for all the other distributions, like we investigate, there's no such operators appear. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to show like how the result is discovered and how to prove it. So in this 2014 paper of Broden, Cohen, Flurry, and Vettel, so there is a determinant formula for the KP, so for some transform of the KPZ equation. So let's look at this formula carefully. So here, HB beta is a solution of the KPZ equation with Brownian motion, but with some drift on the left-hand side and right-hand on the right-hand side. It has drift B on the left-hand side and a drift beta on the right-hand side. And then we define a function G, which is a function of epsilon XTR. So you should just think of the epsilon just is binding to every var variable XTR to give the correct scale. Okay, and uh, here the function G, so then you, just, you, should, you should think of this function G as some normalized version of the height function. So you have height function here and you have T to the, turn the some, some, some uh, linear term in T and, and, and term R. And here, these are the two terms involving B which will disappear eventually. And this is on the exponential level. And then this equation, the, on the left-hand side of this equation, this is some transform of this function G. The function K in the middle is the modified Bessel function. And on the right-hand side, we have a determinant formula. So this is as a freedom determinant. You should think of this as a, like an, an analog of the matrix determinant. And the kernel B here depends on variable B beta epsilon XTR. Okay, so this kernel is an integral kernel. So we will see that, so we can find that the determinant on the right-hand side, so this determinant on the right-hand side satisfy the KP equation because its integral kernel KUV satisfies the following relation. So UV are the variables denoting, the, denoting like the integral kernel. And, uh, RTX are the variables, like the essential variables. So this is some known result in the PDE literature that if like the kernel satisfy this relation, then the determinant will satisfy the KP. And there's some freedom here because by conjugating the kernel with some operator, it will not change the deter determinant. So in this way, we can like modify the kernel a little bit to make it in the form we want. Okay, so this is the starting point where we observe the freedom determinant structure. And then we want to take the limit. So on both sides, we, want, we take the beta goes to B and set B equal to zero. So this will give us the Brownian motion initial condition with no drift. So which is the stationary case we want. And we take the partial R on both sides and let epsilon goes to zero. So in this way, the left-hand side will give us the probability function of this scaled KPZ equation. So which is the object we want to study. So it looks messy because like we have epsilon here. Okay, but this is a scaled, scaled probability function. So the reason we want to take partial R here, and this is the reason like we want to take partial R inverse for the back ring, for the back ring distribution is because by taking this partial R on the left-hand side, the stuff in, so the, only take the, with this partial R, the left-hand side will converge to a probability function as epsilon goes to zero. So all this, like all these limits are done in the same paper here. So, and uh, the right-hand side, so this determinant was, will converge to the partial R of a function G times a function G U E. So the explicit definition of function G will be given in the next slides. But this partial R GFGUE is the scaled by Green's distribution. So in other words, we observe the by Green's distribution in the limits of the right-hand side. So from here, we just conjecture that. So it's basically like you have something satisfies KP and you'll take two limits and you'll take a partial. So we just conjecture that the limiting object will suggest after like taking partial R inverse will satisfy the KP also. So but this is like purely formal. So if you want to make the, this observation rigorous, you basically need to prove that uh, like if a sequence of functions satisfies the KP and then it's limiting function also satisfies KP, which required to prove like the uniform convergence of all the derivatives. Okay, so which is hard, but we can avoid this by checking directly on the, on the definition. So, this is how we're gonna pr prove this. So we can prove this by check, by directly check the differentiation. 
So the backlinks distribution is defined to be after R. So after R is the definition up here in the first slide. So it is equal to some function H. And the function H is just the derivative in X of function G and the function F. So here the place, so here you see, so this derivative in X is basically the derivative in R when you, after you plug in the R into the variable X and W. Okay, so here the function G is defined to be a, a, a function of variable U, X, W, A, B. Okay, so there are like five alphabet here. So here function A, X, W and B, X, W are functions arise in the panel of A2 Riemann Hubert problem. And this uh, variable U, UX is the hasting McLeod solution of the panel of A2 equation. Okay, so, so for function A and B, we have the following good identities, which is like given in the same paper where they defined by Crane's distribution. So you can so look at the partial derivative of X of A and B in X and W. So they just behave very well. So for example, the partial derivative of A in W is some variable times A minus some variable of B. So you should think of like X, U, uh, W are variable here and A and B are functions and they just behave like recursively well. Okay, and also you have a transformation rule for A and B with the A X minus W and B minus W. Okay, so from these slides, we can see that we have an explicit definition of the bicrance distribution given by G and F. So both G and F are just functions of U, X, W, A, B. And then we know the differential, differential rule, differentiation rule for A and B, which means that we can, which means all the derivatives of this phi can be computed explicitly. So if you compute all the derivatives, derivatives of, of, of phi using the information from the, from the previous slides and you plug in them into the KP equation, and then you keep using the information that U is the solution of the panel of A2. So this can, so using, using this identity, you can keep reducing the degree of U, which means that there is no degree three terms in appear, appear in the equation. And then you collect terms according to like the function A and B. So in this way, you will see that all the coefficients before these five terms are zero. So which conclude that the function phi satisfies the KP equation. And in this way, this direct, this elementary verification serve as, serve as a proof for this observation. Okay, so I think that, that's all, that is all for the talk. And thank you for your patience. And uh, I'm glad to answer any questions.